This zombie filled episode is brought to you by Gamefly. Gamefly is a monthly subscription service that brings to you games and Blu rays and DVDs for one low monthly fee. As long as you're paying the monthly fee, you get a game sent to you and you get to keep on playing it until you're done with it. And you send it back and they send you a new game. Looking for, for some suggestions? Here's some good zombie ones The Walking Dead, a Telltale game, is excellent. That's a game that Prodigy loves and he talks about it all the time. Dead Island, Dead Island is another great game. Dying Light is awesome that game is not too old they keep having more and more great dlcs that pretty much change the entire game left for dead 2 is an old school game that's a four player a survival type zombie game that i still love playing it's also another new service from gamefly that's a streaming service that i just learned about that i really didn't even know about um if you have a samsung smart tv an amazon fire stick or an lg smart tv you can stream games through the internet to your tv with no console required how cool is that they have a some pretty cool games that you can stream too that are you know triple a titles they have shank saints row the third and tomb raider to name a few so if you would do us a favor and go to gameflyoffer.com forward slash be then bti you will get a free month of gamefly service you can play games for free for an entire month on us at gameflyoffer.com forward slash be then bti and now on to our interview with lincoln castellanos from fear of the walking dead hold on what is best in life to crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and listen to Blacker Than Black Times Infinity. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is Matt. Joe. And Becky. Host of pre-recorded live from the Mistake on the Lake, and you are listening to Blacker Than Black Times Infinity. There is a story so strange in its implications that it defies ordinary classification. Welcome to Blacker Than Black Times Infinity. I'm your host, Cthulhu's Prodigy. We have another special S-Class interview. Alongside me, we have Kronos and Blue. And most importantly, we have our interview with Lincoln Castellanos from Fear the Walking Dead. What's up, fam? Hey, how's it going? Doing all right. How are you guys doing? Doing Doing great. Man, we are excited. That's what we are. I'm excited, too. Thanks, guys. Thank you for joining us, man. We, uh... We uh, have a mutual friend, and uh, he uh, put us in contact with one another, and uh, we really appreciate uh, him hooking us up with uh, trying to get you on here. So let's jump in, right? Yes. All right. Um, Shout out. Shout out to our buddy, Birdo. Yeah, Yeah. Birdo, what's up? Hell yeah. Um, We also have a new, uh, one of our other members just walked in. uh, Oh, the mouth Late as the hell south. on CP time, we have Stitch joining us as well. All right. Bay area traffic time. We we just jumping in. (laughs) All right. Uh, first things first, I had a quick question uh, to start it all off, man. You played Tobias on Fear the Walking Dead. Can you tell us about your approach when it comes to that character and how you uh, portray him on air? Sure, absolutely. Uh, first, I love Tobias. I, I think he's a great character. Uh, my approach to playing him was one of just, I wanted it to be as honest as possible without being uh, cliched or fall into those common tropes that you see with, you know, perhaps the nerdy high school character that no one listens to. You know, we've seen that song and dance before on movies and in other shows, and they always fall flat. So when I had the opportunity to play this, this character, I knew I wanted to make it A, someone that we haven't seen before in this Walking Dead world, and B, I wanted to try to make him as, as as truthful to his environment, as honest to himself as he can be, and as honest to the world around him. So, I mean, that's how I approach every role. I just want to play it honestly. And I know it sounds kind of, you know, you know, easy to say that, but, you know, it, it's, uh, it's taken a while. I, I guess the thing is, it takes a lot of work to make things look easy. And uh, I just, you know, wanted to play him, you know, with all these nuances and have it really be subtle. You know, there's a lot going underneath the skin. You know, there's layers to this character. There's layers to all the characters with Madison, uh, the, the counselor played by Kim Dickens. So my approach is just that. I just wanted to do the best job that I could, make him someone that people could sympathize with, you know, relate to, feel sorry for because of how he is. Mm. Yeah, that's for sure. And also root for him and not see him as, you know, maybe the first one to go out, you know, uh, you know, to bite the dust. And I'm sure that was on a lot of people's minds when they saw Tobias. Oh, he's the first victim. 
Mm -hmm. But no, not so fast. You you haven't seen the last of him. I mean, we, we didn't uh -oh. we didn't see him. We didn't see him die. Yeah, I was gonna you say know? we don't really that's, see him die. That's what I'm saying. Nice. So, and you know how it goes with Walking Dead or any show in general. I think the the, the rule of thumb is if you don't see them die, then surely. There's a chance for them to come back, right? Hey, okay. yeah. Glenn. There's <laughs> always dumpsters to crawl under. Oh, he's yeah. he's going to be the governor coming back. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so how does uh, Tobias, like, do you, um, as a, like, a normal person, do you have any similarities with Tobias? Or is it just a totally made-up person that you've, you've created? It's a combination of things. It's a combination of, you know, me looking back on my time. In high school, you know, everyone has those memories of high school. You know, oh, they, yeah. some good, a lot they would like to forget, you know. <laughs> and uh, so for me, it was a combination of that, looking back kind of how I was in high school. Everyone's a little awkward. Everyone yeah. has an awkward phase in high school. Tobias just happens to let that be his whole high school, uh, you know, uh, uh, time. He's just one giant social awkward outcast. But, you know... It, it doesn't consume him. He's a smart guy. He's confident in himself. And you see that when he talks about the bully that he's now tutoring because he's an idiot. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, in, in, in some sense, you know, I connect with him that, in the, like, I'm very confident. And everyone should have that confidence and carry themselves, you know, with, with, uh, with that kind of energy, that positive energy. So I'm confident. I'm shy at times. Uh, looking around, you know, having some friends that were more shy than me, than most other people, you know, the, you just look at your surroundings. You look at some people and you say, oh yeah, this character reminds me of this friend or this person I knew back then. So it's a combination of things. Uh, ultimately, it's something that I just wanted to create that I hadn't yet developed before. But for, those who, don't, but for those who don't know, real quick. You're not obviously a high school student. Obviously, you played that on the show, but you are way past out of high school and shit. You know. So you're not uh, a kid. Yeah, I will say that I'm not in high school. Anymore. <laughs> He's a five year old. So, yeah. I, so I got a question about that though. Um, did they actually have to put makeup on you to make it seem like you had bad skin? Yeah, so that was makeup. Right? Okay, cool. And uh, what was funny was the first time that I had an encounter with a fan. Uh, you know, we were talking, and I signed an autograph, and they 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 said. Uh, I think oh I think it was a I think it was a I think it was a mom and and, and her kids the mom was like wow your skin cleared up pretty fast <laughs> that I was tell them proactive and then try to get yeah. that sponsorship yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say that but they don't sponsor this podcast <laughs> <laughs> no but but it's funny because um, when I was in the trailer for the first day of shooting the pilot um, I had a little little haircut little trim not, not, nothing too nothing too serious because my hair was long to begin with. Sometimes I go through these phases where I let it grow out and let it be long, and then like four months later, I get a, I get a trim. Um, so that helped, you know, with establishing. Oh, okay, here's a kid. You know, his priorities aren't really like getting a haircut and looking, you know, really, really, you know, suave like he's going to a dance. His hair is long and messy. Good. So we'll keep that. And then when I'm in the makeup chair uh, with the head of the uh, department, uh, Tracy Anderson, um, she's looking at some photos. And the director comes in, uh, Adam Davidson, of the first couple of episodes. And he's a co-producer, too, this season. Mm -hmm. um, he takes a look at me, takes a look at my hair, and he goes, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll go with the acne. And then he just leaves. <laughs> so then an hour later, I had all the, uh, you know, glory of, of an of a acne-faced high school kid. You know, it's, it's really funny. If you uh, Google your name and Google gives a suggestion and the first thing it suggests is like, what is your age? And like, I guess there's a Reddit going on to try to figure out how low you are. <laughs> Damn. <Yeah. laughs> I know. It's so funny, right? Yeah. What, uh, I wanted to, you sort of touched on it with the uh, confidence that comes through the character of Tobias and everything. Uh, what do you think made him so confident that uh, he was so right about the zombie outbreak? Because at the beginning of the of the series, he was the only one that really knew what was yeah. going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some of the scenes were really frustrating watching uh, Madison uh, sort of like kind of brush it off and deny it and everything. And everyone's sort of screaming at the TV and saying, <laughs> Tobias knows what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> Listen to this dude. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, so with me, my approach was you look at Tobias and you could tell, you know, just, just one glance at him. You're like, man, this kid's had a rough, 
upbringing. He, you know, he must not come from the best uh, household. And that that's that's one hundred percent true. That's the case. We we hear subtle hints dropped mm -hmm. in the in the beginning about trouble at home. You know, he's got a mom. He's got an uncle uh, that's in the picture, and that's about it. So, with that at people's disposal, you know, they could only assume that a things are rough. So mm -hmm. he must not have anyone to rely on, you know, to support him at home. So. Who's left to do that for him himself? Yeah, and true. you see that with a lot of kids growing up, you know, in maybe rougher than normal neighborhoods. These kids essentially have to grow up faster than they normally would, uh, taking care of themselves, fending for themselves, or maybe it's the older sibling taking care of all their younger brothers and sisters because they can't rely on the parents, or the parents aren't in the picture, or something is wrong. Something is wrong with the household. Something's wrong with the family, and that's that's what is the case. In my uh, opinion, with mm. Tobias, see, I and feel that's that's the energy I wanted to project. Yeah. I feel he's that got uh, no to... one, he's got no one to to give him the confidence that he needs. He has to do that for himself. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I, I feel that Tobias is the only person in the in the Walking Dead universe who's seen uh, Night's Living Dead, so he knows he knows <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and people, you know, ask me all the time, you know, and I always clarify with them, according to Robert Kurtman. Yeah. The Walking Dead world is a world without zombies. So as mm. as easy as it is to maybe you know think that Tobias is the only one with a copy of like a Night of the Living Dead, you know, cut that never made it. Yeah. Sort of speculation, <laughs> um, because he's had to rely on himself. He's he's a very he's a very much you know book smart, street smart kid. So everything that he's learned, he's learned on his own. And the the fastest way for someone to learn something, the quickest way is to do their own research online. So Tobias is really a character, a, a kid who lives on the internet. He's got no one else to talk to or you know socialize with. So his escape is the internet, and uh, with that, you know, you have all those subreddits, all those um, you know web chat rooms where you hear all these horrible things that's going on, all these news reports, and he's the only one that seems to put it together, yep. or he's a he's the fastest one to put it together. And that's what uh, makes him so, so scared, so worried of what's to come. And he's confident enough to take a chance and take a weapon to school, take, take that small ass <laughs> knife with him because he doesn't trust that it's nothing. Yeah. He knows that it's something and it's something bad. Yeah. Glad you brought up that, that small knife. It brings up a good question. Do you have any real life zombie survival skills? <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, I I think everyone does. You know, instinctively they they want to believe <laughs> that they could last in a yeah. zombie <laughs> apocalypse. And you know, I won't say I haven't looked at those zombie books. You know, when I go when I go to like Barnes and Nobles, but I, I'm a fan of the genre. I'm a fan of the horror genre, and I love zombie movies. Uh, I love The Walking Dead comics. That yes. I've been reading those for years. Nice. before the show came out so i'm aware of you know how to take care of yourself how to defend yourself i would last <laughs> i definitely would i have enough skills i've seen enough stuff to know what to do what not to do yeah all right so i know that you are a socal kid obviously and yeah. you're still down there um the show is set in southern california i think in la proper right yeah, the first season was set in L.A. You saw a lot of downtown L.A. You saw more or less like the Hollywood, Silver Lake area. Yeah. Uh, that's where Nick gets hit in the opening scene of the first episode. And slowly they've moved uh, more south. Now in the second part of season two, mm -hmm. we see the family in TJ. Yeah. But what works with the Southern California area because it's obviously drastically different from everything that we've seen uh in the southeast and uh, mid-atlantic area on the walking dead uh, what do you think works with that setting you know well what works is it's showing you that even in a sunny place like california you can't escape <laughs> the darkness that, that comes with with this walker infection with this with this plague this virus you know it affects everywhere not just the woods of Atlanta 
of you know the outskirts of Washington. No, this this affects the beach line. This affects uh, Santa Monica. This affects uh, downtown, the reservoir. Just uh, you know, you see these vacant hot, uh, freeways yeah. full of cars, just like you did in the first in the first pilot episode of Walking Dead yeah. when Rick's galloping on his horse to Atlanta, the other side of the freeway, just cars abandoned yeah. just for miles and miles and miles. It LA isn't isn't uh you know safe from that. So this this walker, this zombie virus, it's affected everywhere. And you know the show makes it look like that's where it started. It started in LA, started on the West Coast. And it's it's terrifying, you know. No one's safe from this. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned the whole traffic thing in LA because it, it, that's like a normal day in LA. <laughs> so it, either it's either abandoned cars or it's just a typical two two a.m. Mm-hmm. People getting out of the club. <laughs> just yeah, it's just a four or five. Yeah, it's just a four <laughs> or five. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I'm glad you did mention uh, that you do. I, you actually stole one of my questions from earlier because I was going to ask if you were a fan of actually reading the uh, the comics um, and everything. So we were all pleasantly surprised when you uh, came out and said that you've been reading them before you got uh, onto the show and everything. Because I'm personally, I'm a huge fan of the uh, Walking Dead books, and uh, I, I mean, I'm so attached to the characters in the show. Um, I guess my sort of uh, following question with that would be. Um, I guess who's your fa- favorite character? I guess to interact with on in uh, like uh, in the show and sort of maybe like uh, behind the scenes on uh, Fear the Walking Dead. So I'm, I'm glad you asked that. I I love Kim Dickens. I think she's she's a wonderful and talented actress. She's beautiful inside and out, and she was just a joy to work with on set. She, I mean, she was the main person that I, I really worked with. Uh, I got to work with Scott Lawrence, who played Artie, Principal Artie. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, working with them together in that fight scene was a lot of fun. But the, the, the memories that I'll hold on to the longest are those first days, um, going through the metal detector, having her reach in my pocket, <laughs> you know, pat me on the back, you know, like, give me, like, a nice shoulder, you know, like, you know, hand on the shoulder, trying to comfort me. Uh, you know, improvising a little bit, going along with the character's back backstory. You know, how how's your mom? You know, come on, let's talk. Um, really treating me like you know, uh, you know, we're 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 actors, and we're supposed to do the we're supposed to be a professional and keep everything honest and truthful to our characters. And there were moments where we were really in tune with each other. I think everything you see in the final product of episode one and two with us, it's all genuine. When I'm talking to her in the classroom, pleading with her, begging with her, and she's trying to reassure me that nothing is wrong, everything is fine, mm. as a counselor, as a mentor would do for a student in, in school, uh, it, it's special to me. And I learned so much from her just listening to her. And that's what you have to do as an actor. You know, you could go to school for years and years and years. The one thing you're going to hold on to more than any other rule or lesson is just listen. And I learned so much from Kim just by listening to her. Nice. And we hear other actors say that too. Like they really learn from like somebody who's more experienced. Like just sitting there and listening to them, like having them tell you, kind of give you directions on how to improve your acting yeah. career can really help your career in the long run. Yeah, being open to like constructive criticism, obviously. Uh, I mean, it's not with other other people and other peers in your uh, your work profession. I'm, I'm sure. I mean, it works like that with pretty much all jobs but it's definitely good to hear that like among among actors and everything because a lot of times actors get a bad rap of having like super egos and not wanting to listen to anybody so it's really nice and refreshing to hear like that sort of uh helpful work environment and uh positive uh um people among uh, in that craft absolutely absolutely and and that's what i would say is is you know so much the case for me working with everyone on the fear set with Dave Erickson, the showrunner, the the writer uh, of the of the whole thing, uh, he was the the best mentor I could ask for. Just going to him and you know trusting him with his vision and you know just having him reassure me of you know is what I'm doing is this enough? Is this is this what you were aiming for when you wrote it? 
and for him to tell me you're you're doing great just keep doing what you're doing this is why this is why we we have you here this is why we 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 chose you and have you part of this family so for him to give me that confidence uh just help me imbue that more into Tobias and his own confidence nice. as as a social outcast yet smart kid so to learn from uh Dave to learn from uh Kim on set to learn from uh Adam Davidson too the director it's like you me as a young actor we all have to learn from our mentors we all have someone we all need people to look up to we can't do this on our own and certainly those those actors those producers those directors they all started somewhere too they all listened and looked up to someone too so it's important to have those role models it's important to have those mentors and it's important to take criticism and to recognize you know we don't know everything i'm mm-hmm. a young actor I don't know everything. I treat every role, uh, my first day on set with a role, as it's the first time I'm ever, you know, been invited to act before. You know, so I'm always asking, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I, I stay loose and I stay honest and I stay open, mm-hmm. and that's important to me. So it's important to have that 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 confidence enough to say, I need to look up to somebody to help guide me through this, that's and eventually true. you'll you'll be on your way. And you'll look back and say, "These are the people that helped me." Makes sense. So, what are you working on right now? You have anything coming up? I think we heard about uh, Showtime's Roadies coming out, or can you <laughs> that's tell us right. more about that? Yeah, role? yeah. So, I worked on a few episodes of Roadies. That's on Showtime. It's on Sunday nights. It it was a lot of fun. Oh man, I uh, I initially auditioned for one part that was going to be like, I don't know, like two lines. Um, one character. It was gonna like be like shown on the show. It was gonna come up like on an iPhone, like watching a video on an iPhone, mm-hmm. and I was gonna be the kid on the iPhone, and that was gonna be it. But I love, I love, you know, the opportunity to work on a Showtime show. So I give it my all, and it turns out I get invited to read for uh, another part. And the show is produced by. Cameron Crow, and he wrote it and he directed a few episodes. So I had the chance to work with Cameron Crow on set. So to have that experience, and then to also meet J.J. Abrams, another producer oh, of the nice. show. Name dropping. <laughs> well, it was it, it was it was a blast. It was it was a lot of fun. So for them to just give me some nice you know attaboys and kudos and tell me, hey man, you're really funny on the show. Thanks, you know we're we're so lucky to have you. It, it means the world to to any actor because yes. it lets them know and it let me know that I'm still doing something right. I just want to keep doing that. I just want to keep busy and I want to keep making these these opportunities happen for myself. And I want these opportunities to happen for every actor. I mean, I remember growing up hearing because I'm from Indio, California, which is about two hours east of Los Angeles. Yeah. For anyone that doesn't know where where it is, it's Coachella Fest. That, yeah. that's, 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 <laughs> yes, it is. Nice and hot. <laughs> <laughs> nice and hot. Yeah, yeah. And so I remember growing up, you know, always hearing this rumor that Cameron Crow grew up in the valley mm. where we were from, and I was like, "What, really?" And like my mom was like, "Yeah, you know, I, I think he went to your your Catholic school, or he went to Indio High School, you know." And I could never find it online. It, it was never online. Um, when I worked with him on set, I never brought it up because I was like, you know what? It's probably just a rumor. There's no truth to it. And one night, he follows me on Twitter, and then he messaged me. Uh, he, I, I, I checked my inbox, and it's a message from so him saying, <laughs> "Hey, I'm from Indio too." Oh, this is Cameron, by the way. And I was like, <laughs> oh man, that's really awesome. So we just started chatting, and he went to middle school there. For oh, a couple nice. of years, so that's where it was. So I was like, "Oh, there's truth to it, and that's awesome." Just, a, just a couple of Indio boys working on a Showtime show. Nice. It, uh, it felt pretty special. That's good shit. So, can you describe what Roadies is all about? Like a little bit of a detail about it, about the show. Yeah, the show is about the people that make the concerts come to life. You know, when you go right, to a right, concert guys. and you okay. see all the lights set up, <laughs> the stage no, come out. Know. This this huge spectacle of sound and lights and the, the band and everything sounds mm-hmm. so crisp and you just walk away from that experience. That the show is about those people, the roadies. Does it give you like a re- really good understanding of what roadies do? Because I've seen some behind the scenes stuff and like the, like they'll do like a 
a, a still image or not a still image, uh, a time lapse, time lapse of a yeah. stadium be, or uh, the stage being set up, and it's like it's crazy what they do. Like have to like carry up everything and like set up it's and then take it down also. It didn't then take it down. Yeah, it is. It's it gives you an honest and hilarious look into what it's really like. For the men and women who, and you know, guys and girls, there's, there's young roadies there too. Uh, to all the people that get there like hours, hours earlier in the day, have their their you know uh, tribal you know kumbaya, <laughs> uh, you know uh, jazz, you know energy, you know motivational speech to make sure everything goes right tonight and. No one messes anything up, you know. No one in the crowd gets too crazy, and you know, no one falls off the stage or no lights fall. And you know, it's about these people who hope for the best, and then stuff happens, and then they got to deal with it. Whether it's a drama with the band, right. or a guest band that drops out the last minute, <laughs> or you know, managers being accused of these heinous crimes, oh, or. Or stalker fans like Ooh. sneaking backstage. Groupies. <laughs> all of these oh, things. Bags. Yes, groupie actions. A lot of groupie actions. <laughs> There's a lot of drama, and it's really funny at the same time. I mean, that's what Cameron Crowe does so well. Everything he does has such an endearing, soulful honesty. And uh, you saw that with Almost Famous. So yeah. met, this is just a callback to Almost Famous nice. because when he was working with. Uh, with you know Rolling Stone, he he met all these roadies when he was with the bands. He he met all these people. He he took all these great stories with him, and he's finally had an opportunity to team up with someone like JJ and and tell tell these stories. And it's great. Quick quick question. I think this might be our last one, unfortunately, because we could talk to you all day. But <laughs> um, if you could be in the uh, MCU or DC EU uh, or extended universe, yeah. Um, what character would you like to see? Or Image Universe, because, I mean, come on, we got to be fair here, right? <laughs> All right, fine. Image Universe in there as well. Uh, in a comic book movie. Comic book character. <laughs> what would you like to see uh, or portray as, a, as an actor like it? Oh, that is awesome. Well, you know what? I'll tell you uh, right off the bat, without hesitation, I love Spider-Man. Yes! Ooh. I always love Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, I'm a huge, 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 huge Marvel fan. I have been since I was a kid. That's really how I got into Walking Dead comics. You know, remember the uh, old magazine, Wizard Magazine? Of oh, course. Yeah. Right. So I was in love with that magazine. There there aren't many comic book shops in Indio. So growing up, I didn't really have access to comic books on a weekly or monthly basis. But there was a bookstore that did carry Wizard Magazine. So that was my... That was the way I was up to speed on everything going on. And the first issue that I ever saw of this was of Spider-Man. It, I think it was in... 2000 or 2001 it was spider-man on the cover i was like was this a spider-man comic oh no it's a magazine talking about comics this is just what i need and over years and years and years of reading with it um uh you know spending years reading it i came across an article once that was uh talking about most uh uh most shocking comic book most shocking comic book uh, deaths mm -hmm. and Walking Dead was on there, and I didn't know what it was at the time. I read the synopsis; it was of Lori, the baby, yeah. and I was like, "Whoa, mm -hmm. this is this is crazy!" I got to read what this comic is about. So when I did, I was hooked, mm -hmm. and you know, so indirectly it was because of my love for Marvel that that got me into Walking Dead. Nice. So uh, I love Spider Man. I'm really excited to see what happens with Homecoming. You know what? I I know somebody that works at Marvel and I had the chance earlier this year to go to the headquarters in New York, get a tour of nice. Marvel. Oh, nice. And just... Geek just out. Geek out. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, was, I was a kid again. Nice. I was Tobias. I was a kid. <laughs> I was, you had pimples start you know. popping up and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just living the dream because you know, in my mind, it's like, what kid wouldn't be a Marvel a Marvel fan. I mean, yeah, and DC is great too. I love Marvel. I love Spider Man. I love Cap. I love Thor, uh, Hulk, uh, Captain Marvel. They're all just amazing characters that 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 kids should you know read about, look up to, and you know want to be good just like them. So I love that world. I love that world, and I'm really excited to see what Marvel does next. If I ever had the chance to work in a Marvel project, whether it's something on Netflix or ABC or the movies, man, 
Oh man, <laughs> I would be one happy Marvel camper. I'll nice. just put it out. You don't even need to get paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just at the end of the day, I'm happy to 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 be an actor and tell stories. So this whole this whole experience has been such a blessing. Um, to be out here working as an actor, to have the support from my family, my mom and dad, my brothers, you know, it's, it, it means the world to me uh, to have that support and to have that, that love from fans of the show. I mean, I wouldn't be in this position if it wasn't for all the fans who have uh, done so much to express their, their love and affection for Tobias in the show. So I'm happy for the fans. I'm happy for everyone that supports the journey that I'm on as well. And I just want to keep it going i don't want to stop i want to keep telling stories and have people listen to what i have to say all right cool is there anything else you want to plug uh check out roadies uh my episodes are on their you know app uh, on demand I, I believe you can find them on the showtime app uh, website but keep watching roadies it's a great show that that cameron does so support that Fear comes back on this Sunday night. So, nice. you know, we have that to look forward to, to see what happens with, with Nick, blood-covered Nick, uh, <laughs> it, well, walking the, <laughs> the lonely streets of TJ. <laughs> uh, it, I am going to be doing my next convention, meeting fans in Palm Springs Ooh, next that? weekend. Nice. Oh, so shit. August 26th through the 28th, that's next Friday through Sunday, I'm going to be in Palm Springs at the Palm Springs Convention Center for Comic Con Palm Springs, oh, our nice. our valley's doing their first ever convention, Comic Con convention. So I would love for people to come out there. Stan Lee's going to be there also. So oh, nice. if, if you want to meet me, this is your chance. And if you also want to meet, you know, the the man of who started everything with mm-hmm. Marvel, uh, Stan's going to be there. Stan's the man. So check me out there, uh, and I'm going to be shooting out more details about that on Twitter. And Instagram, and everyone can follow me on that with Lincoln the Actor. All one word, Lincoln the Actor. Thank you so much, fam. We really appreciate you. We're going to chocolate bananas and uh, get on out of here. But uh, <laughs> thank, thank you, guys. Thank, yeah, thank you for your time. Stitch. I, really, I really do appreciate it, guys. You, this was fun. Yeah, thank yes, you. Have a good rest of your day, Lincoln. You too, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. You're welcome.